concerns about this uh, large 100,000 inhabitants. So for some of you, maybe not as big because really often you come from large cities with a few million people. But uh, definitely it's much bigger than Chesky Kremlov where we are going because Chesky Kremlov has only about 13,000 inhabitants. So it's just a little medieval town where we are going. But don't worry, we won't be definitely alone in the streets because Chesky Kremlov is the second most visited place after Prague in the Czech Republic. So we get something between one and a half million to two million visitors a year. So definitely quite a few people in the streets, but the population of the town is quite small uh, compared to Linz, definitely. And Linz is also a really important city uh, for Austria because of industry. Uh, so there are a lot of factories. For example, there is a big stainless steel factory uh, in Linz. Uh, and some of these factories, they were built around the Second World War uh, because some of them were built by Hitler, who considered Linz as his hometown. And he really had some big plans with Linz. And that's why he was building uh, the industry around here. So Hitler is definitely one of the important person from the history of Linz. Another important person from the history of Linz is Johannes Kepler, who was a mathematician and astronomist. And uh, there is an interesting connection between Linz and Prague, because Johannes Kepler lived in Prague uh, in the 1500s, working for Rudolf II over there. And then he decided to move to Linz, and he was working over here uh, in Linz. And that's the reason why they have Johannes Kepler University over here in Linz. And Linz is also important because of a uh, big intersection. A lot of the roads are meeting here in Linz. So there is a highway coming from Passau, Salzburg, Vienna, and then the highway we are using now to get to the border of the Czech Republic, even though this border, uh, this uh, highway doesn't go all the way to the border, we will be getting off uh, to smaller road, uh, but quite far we will be driving uh, on the highway. Plus what is really important for Linz is Danube, which you are experiencing because they have the biggest port uh, on Danube uh, in Linz, uh, and it's mainly because of uh, the industry. Then the railway is also quite large there, so a lot of the trains are meeting uh, in Linz, uh, so an important city, which is not even very far from the border of the Czech Republic so quite a lot of people from the Czech Republic come over here to work and then also from the surroundings of Linz so about 30,000 people come to Linz for work so usually in the morning the traffic is quite heavy uh, because of people coming to work and then in the afternoon gets heavy again when people are leaving but today we noticed that the traffic wasn't nearly as heavy as it is normally and the reason is that they have the last day of school in uh, Austria uh, so the kids are finishing school uh, today and so probably many people are starting their vacation already. So I would like to also introduce myself a little more now when I told you about Linz a little. So I'm really local from Chesky Kromov, that's my hometown, that's where I was born and that's where I live. Uh, and uh, I live uh, in the new part of the town, about 15 minutes walk from the center in a family house uh, with my family, two kids, one husband, it's plenty. And <laughs> he's a good one though. Uh, and then I also live with my grandparents. We have two apartments uh, in my house and I'm going to mention my grandfather during the walking tour because he was born in Chesky Kromov before the Second World War. So when I talk about the Second World War history, I include my grandfather as well and I have been working as a tour guide over 10 years I really love it I enjoy it and I have learned my English while living with an American family I was a nanny for them for four years but living in Germany in a beautiful place called Berchtesgaden, where the Eagle's Nest is, the Hitler's Tea House that's where the Son of Music was uh, filmed so uh, that's where I actually uh, learned my English and I visited the US with them uh, nearly 20 years ago. I went to Montana to start with. Anybody from Montana, by the way? Hardly ever, but there are people there, I know it. I have friends there. But uh, I traveled in an RV uh, around uh, the west coast of the US. So we went to Seattle and then down the west coast all the way to LA and then Las Vegas, Salt Lake City and back to Montana. So that was my round trip nearly 20 years ago. But now I can say I have a family uh, and uh, we visited the East Coast for a change. So we went to New York, Orlando, and Washington, D.C. So it was a beautiful experience. We really loved it. And uh, my family is talking about the next trip already. So I have to save money because they want to go again. So we all enjoy that. So 
that was about me. Now we can compare uh, Austria and uh, the Czech Republic because there are some similarities between these two countries. So first of all, the size of uh, Austria and the Czech Republic is really close. So 32,000 square miles, so uh, that's the size of Austria as well as uh, the Czech Republic. And uh, the number of inhabitants is also really close because Austria has 9 million people and the Czech Republic has about 10 million people, so really close number uh, in the number of inhabitants. And uh, then both of these countries are the landlocked countries. When uh, the Czech Republic is neighboring with uh, four different countries, so it's with Austria, Germany, Poland, and Slovakia. And Austria is neighboring with more than that, so Austria has really a lot of different neighbors. So Austria is neighboring with the Czech Republic, Germany, Hungary, Slovakia, Italy, Slovenia, and Switzerland. So many different neighbors uh, for Austria. What is an interesting fact about Austria is that only only 32% of the country uh, is below 500 meters, below 1,600 feet. The elevation of the country is quite high. And it's not only because of the hills we'll be crossing now between the borders, because the border between Austria and the Czech Republic are mountains or hills, but it's mainly because of the Austrian Alps. And the Austrian Alps is a big business for the whole of Austria, mainly in the winter because of skiing. And I would say that nearly everybody from Austria can ski from quite early age. Uh, so they really learn when they go to kindergarten. It's part of the education over here. So everybody from Austria pretty much can ski. Uh, plus uh, a lot of the surrounding countries, I have mentioned that they have a lot of neighbors around here. So a lot of people come over here for skiing to the Alps as well. So for example, from Chesky Kurmlov, it's only about two hours to get uh, to the closest Alps. So many people from the Czech Republic take advantage of the Alps in the winter as well. And then uh, the Alps, it's also beautiful for uh, hiking in the summer. So the summer vacations are beautiful there. And nowadays what is getting really popular, it's also bicycling. So many people go mountain biking uh, in the Alps also. And uh, both of these countries were part of the Holy Roman Empire as well as uh, the Habsburg monarchy. And the first Austrian Republic was established in 1919 as the first Czechoslovakia, it was called back then, it was established in 1918. So it was immediately after the First World War. And uh, Austria is one of the richest countries in the whole world, and it's part of the European Union since 1995, as the Czech Republic is part of the European Union since 2004, and Austria has Euro since 1999 as the Czech Republic doesn't have Euro. So we can talk about it, so you don't have to worry about the currency. Uh, we have our own Czech currency. It's called Corona Česka, the Czech crown. And uh, as I mentioned, we get a lot of visitors coming to Český Kremlov. Uh, so you don't need to worry about the currency in Český Kremlov at all, because all of the places you'll go to, they'll accept Euros. So if you don't want to bother with exchanging the money, then it's really easy to stick uh, to Euro, uh, since uh, when you return back to Austria, you can't use the Czech currency anywhere else except uh, in the Czech Republic. So it just may be easier for you to stay with uh, Euro and uh, everywhere you'll go to. So buying your snacks, souvenirs, uh, lunch, uh, and uh, even going to the public bathrooms where we have to pay, uh, then uh, you can use euros there as well. So it's quite easy. If you would like to exchange the money, then we'll be passing an exchange office, uh, which I'm going to point out during the walking tour. Plus, uh, there are two banks in the main square you can use to exchange your money as well. Uh, if you use the ATM machine in the Czech Republic, it's going to give you the Czech money. I have to warn you, so it's not going to uh, give you euro. The exchange rate at the moment is roughly 24 crowns to 1 US dollar and about 26 crowns to 1 euro. So it's something in between. So if you divide the prices by 25, then you are really close there with both of the currencies. So if something costs 100 Czech crowns, then it's about 4 US dollars or 4 euros. And if something costs 1,000 Czech crowns, then it's about 40 US dollars or 40 euros. So it's really easy really to figure out the prices. A lot of the places they have uh, 
the prices written in both in Czech and uh, in Euros. And of course, if you ask, then everybody is going to help you uh, to uh, figure out the exchange rate and to figure out the prices of the things in the restaurants and in the shops as well. So all the places you'll go to, they are going to speak at least a little bit of English, so, so you shouldn't have a problem. And then going to the restaurant, you don't need to worry about the language either. Even though we speak our beautiful Czech Slavic language, uh, it's nothing similar to German or English, but the menus are always written at least in three different languages. So it's Czech, English and German, but then you'll find menus written in others as well. So really often French, Russian, nowadays Chinese, Japanese, Korean and others. So really uh, many different languages around Chesky Kromov. So you shouldn't have a problem to get around uh, the town. And I'll be talking a little about the restaurants later on as well. So you can learn about the cuisine uh, also. Now we got on the new stretch of the highway, which we don't have here very long. Uh, it's only for about three years uh, since we are using this uh, stretch of the highway. Uh, they were building it over here for about three years and we are really impressed uh, by this highway, especially coming from the Czech Republic, because they are promising the highway on the Czech side as well for over 25 years, but they haven't started yet, uh, so we don't have it so far, unfortunately. Unfortunately, the Czech Republic is the slowest and most expensive in building roads uh, in the whole Europe, and we hope this is going to change. But. Uh, we are still a little behind probably since we were living under socialism with the Communist Party for 40 years and so we have to get there and hopefully we will one day but we are impressed really by the Austrians the way they build the roads and they maintain the roads it's just really impressive so we'll be even driving through several tunnels on our way and in no time we'll be entering the first one which is the longest one on our way it's four and a half kilometers about three miles uh, and it's not even the longest one in Austria because uh, they have a lot of the long tunnels going through the Alps when going to Italy and Switzerland some of the tunnels are so long you even have to pay the fee to go through so this is not the case of here but we'll really go through a couple tunnels on our way and uh, it must be a great release for all of the small towns and villages in this area because all of the heavy traffic going between the two countries, between the Czech Republic and Austria, uh, trucks, buses and cars don't go through these small towns and villages anymore, but they go on the highway and using the tunnels, so it must be a great release. And they also maintain the roads and the tunnels beautifully, uh, so we come here quite often and we see all, all of the work they do, maintenance, around uh, and they even wash the walls of the tunnel so it's just quite impressive for us coming from the Czech Republic especially. We are out of the tunnel. The weather may be good better, right, when we drove through. So it was drizzling on the other side. Sometimes uh, the tunnel changes the weather for us. So I'm serious with that, really. <laughs> Especially when it's cold season, so uh, in the winter, then it can change quite a bit because the elevation changed when going through the tunnel, we went up the hill. So sometimes it can be a difference when coming out. So let's talk about the Czech Republic. 
uh, about the history of our country. So first of all, I have to explain the different names of the country you are going to hear, because for a long time it was called the Bohemian Kingdom. Uh, then 